Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to the Adventures Travel Club television show. Betty, we're going to one of your favorite places. That's the Rhine Falls in Switzerland. Yeah, you know, I have so many favorite places that when you say one of my favorite places, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what's going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> so, anyway. Or, or what you're going to see on the screen, uh, right? I, yeah, what I might yeah. see on the screen, yeah. But it is. It's beautiful. And we had some good memories of this oh, of this yeah. river. I mean, having been there before and... Uh, you, you you can kind of go back and think, oh, gosh, I forgot that that was there. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's fun. And this is, a, as far as I know, on the Rhine River, this, this is the only place where you're going to find the waterfalls, right? That's what they say. Yeah. I haven't gone down the whole <laughs> length of it, so I'll take I'll take their word for granted. This, well, we had Didn't we have a little map that showed us the different waterfalls as we went down? Did we get one of those on, on the, the Rhine? On the I'm boat? not quite didn't sure we get about one the Rhine. We did, well, I think uh, when we went on the other river, I think oh, that, yeah, other, we did okay. that. But I, as far as I know, on the Rhine, this is the only one. I, now, somebody can call in and correct us if that's, if that's true. No, enough. please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, some of our group there, we, we just got out of the bus, and the bus, uh, we have to walk kind of down to the area where the water is, but boy, there's a lot of photo op areas that you can just stop and, and get beautiful pictures, and there was kind of a little castle up there on the hill, and I, you know, Betty, I'm sorry, but I forgot what the, there was a, there was a story to this, uh, it doesn't look too much like a castle, but it sits right there uh, on a very uh, precarious perch, I guess I would say. But this is an interesting place right here. Mm -hmm. And you stand there and the the, the the water blows in your face. It's just exhilarating. Mm. I love it. And then, if, you know, if you want to, if you have time enough, you can get on one of these uh, little boats and they will they will take you over right over to the falls. Like Betty said, that yeah. was just one area yeah, there. But, but th look here, there's a kind of that little island thing. Yeah, or it looks yeah, like yeah, yeah. That's middle, where we remember? walked over around. The, but you, you can get me one of those boats. I want to complete my trip. You want to get in one of those falls? I, no, 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 no. I wouldn't get in one oh, of those get falls in one. like that. No. Why? I want to be sure I complete my trip. Oh, I see. <laughs> you know, look I at how... I think it's pretty they, safe, though. Well, don't you think I, so? I guess. But I don't the, know. I mean, they're the people getting I, off. But you're right, boy. That yeah, water just see, rushing it, right it, down there. I, I'm just... I know how to swim, but I, I wouldn't want to go over the falls. Swim, say, yeah, I don't think uh, I would either, you know. The, uh, these were very interesting falls, and uh, but it all of a sudden, you know, just a few yards down, there's the river, just nice and tranquil and smooth as it can be. And later on, we are going to, uh, uh, no, we already did, didn't we? We already took the Rhine cruise. I'm thinking about the Danube, too. Why do I get hey, these rivers mixed I up? I want to tell you, you get as confused as I do, so it makes me feel good. Well, um, the only thing is, is that Betty travels more than I do, so uh, that's why I'm traveling a little bit more these days, and that's why I'm probably getting a little uh, more confused. Now here's our good friends, Gloria oh, yeah. and Chuck, and Gloria. Gloria is a bishop secretary here at the diocesan. We call it the pastoral center pastoral now. Center, right? Yeah. In fact, Betty, they just celebrated their fiftieth golden wedding yeah. anniversary. It was fun. I was there. Oh, that, was so like, was I. Yeah. It, was, it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And so we want to give them again congratulations on the air too to Gloria and Chuck Marshall. Really wonderful folks, and they've traveled with us before. In fact, ten years ago, they made this the same, same trip with trip. us. But he also they went with us when we went to Paris, and we went to Normandy Beach, and Chuck brought his trumpet, uh -huh. and we were out there at the grave site with the rows and rows and rows of white white uh, crosses, mm -hmm. and and it was misting a little bit, and Ch and Chuck played the trumpet, the taps. Uh -huh. And we all cried. I mean, it was a wonderful th thought uh, that he did to bring that, it that, for that us. That is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, he's, you know, Chuck is very active with the scouts and also mm. uh, with, their, with their camp as and well. The quartet. The, what does he uh, sing? A cappella. No, he sings the, the, yeah, the, the, oh, the barbershop. Barbershoppers. Barbershop. That's yeah. right. Chuck yeah. has been active yeah. in that for a long time. Okay. There's your bird. My I know. birds and also the fish. And, of course, this is right at the Rhine Falls. So this is, uh, you know, that uh, it's a very active uh, waterway, not only for people going up and down on the boats, but also for some of the uh, animals there, too. You know, it always surprised me because as we go into places like Lucerne and other places, we're going into Zurich now, but as we go into Lucerne, you look on the Lake Lucerne and you see swans all over the place. Well, you would go look for them if they weren't there, I swear. Yeah, but you didn't you... have to look for them. I mean, they were there. They were there. They, and, well, I swan. Oh, I swan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Switzerland is a very interesting country, and of course, as we all know, that Switzerland has been, you know, a, a neutral country uh, since uh, I think it was. 
from 1515, I think. Yeah, uh, 1550. Well, and, and, you know, all those other countries around it was, is bordered by France and Germany and Italy and Austria. And, of course, they've all had all sorts of problems just year after year. Oh, Betty, wait, 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 here we are. All right, this is a shot I had to take because everybody got out of the bus and they said, now, Marv, you have to take a shot of this. I said, what are you talking about? Well, look over there on the left-hand side. There are all those ladies were sunbathing without their tops on. That was a oh. ladies' bathhouse. Well, I'm glad you didn't go inside. Well, I don't think they would have let me inside. Oh, well, and I don't think uh, uh, we would have put it on the air if you had. <laughs> well, I didn't uh, take a, uh, you know, no. a Zoom picture, except the Zoom picture here of the Alps well, that were in the background. But you know, you go down to South America, they don't go inside one of them. They're they not there on the beach on the like beach, that. That's true. And, and uh, that's just part of their, mm, what? What do you call it's it? Just, just, that's nature. Just that's nature, the way right. we are. We are now uh, in Zurich, and we're looking at, uh, there was Alms House here, Alms House of the Cloisters, that was on this spot right here. Now, uh, somebody asked me, what's an Alms House? And that like a poor house? Yeah. That, well, that's all, uh, yeah I, well, people give alms, I guess, to keep it going. Right. Yeah, yeah. I would think so. Anyway, we are now in... Uh, Farewell a, to alms. <laughs> We're in a church here. Uh, I believe at one time that this was a Roman Catholic church, but during the Reformation, and uh, Zwingli was the one who was uh, popular in Switzerland. Uh, and so this church now belongs to that uh, denomination that uh, he had started. And down in the basement, Betty, I don't know if you got down here, but there was a statue of Charlemagne. And, up, and upstairs, uh, on the outside of the church, there's also a statue of Charlemagne there. And it says uh, that was formed between 1450 and 1475, and the original stands in a niche over the river, which we'll probably have a chance to see a little bit later on. But well, now there's there's uh, Bob down there in the right. bottom, so I know he, I don't, I, I didn't go there. Oh, you didn't go there? I don't think oh, so. Oh, well, well, I went over there. I went with your well, cousin over well, there. Well, where was he, I? You were probably across the river Some somewhere having, 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 more uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buying, buying, because no, this was one buy. day that we got into Zurich when it wasn't a Sunday, and the stores were still open, yeah. if you recall. Didn't buy a thing. You but didn't I, buy a I thing? I do a lot of looking. There's Charlemagne overlooking yeah. Oh, that's nice. River. Yeah. Isn't I think I saw the outside. I don't recall oh. going down into the grotto. Well, you know, we kind of, everybody kind of went their own way yeah. because we had a little extra time. This is interesting right here. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, the people it's very interesting. With their feet in the water right And there. I love the, the way, well, like here, it looks like this looks like it would be for tax. You'd have to pay a certain tax if you, oh, is that what you know, it is? I don't know. I mean, it, I thought I, it was a place that you parked your boat. And then if you wanted to go downstairs, you caught your boat. and then. <laughs> <laughs> You're worse than I am. I, <laughs> honestly, honestly. Anyway, these buildings in Zurich were, were absolutely beautiful. And this is a shopping area. This is where Betty, I know, this is where she spent most uh. of her time over there. Because there were some beautiful things. Those Swiss watches. Expensive. And well, Switzerland is expensive. Yeah, but I don't buy things that are expensive. I like, I'm a good looker. Though. You're a good looker? I'm a... Well, that's what a lot of people said about you, Betty. You're a good looker. <laughs> oh. You know? <laughs> oh. I'll give you that compliment. Well, thank you. Thank you. You betcha. Anyway, uh, just a little bit more about Switzerland, and that is that 63% uh, of the people speak German, 19% speak French, 7.6% speak Italian, and Romanche, which is uh, their, their native language, only 0.6% uh, speak that. Isn't that something? Oh, that is something. You know, I'm not, uh, um, I'm not real. Uh, what do I want to say? Enthusiastic about Zurich. You take me to Lucerne, and then I'm in my element. But here, oh, yeah. but Zurich is that. Uh, well, of course, when I was there before, it was a Sunday, and it was pretty dead. Right, but uh, this time was this time. This, it was this was yes, and it is beautiful. More shopping. And one thing about Switzerland. They don't have an army, isn't that right? They do have an army, do but it's now? all civilian army. Civilian, okay. And, and remember, as you cross the border, the, and in fact, as you cross the border, you'll notice that there's some plates in the in the road, and that is all mined right there. So if anybody decided to come across their border, they can blow up the roads right from the from the inside. And everybody has a has a a weapon at home, and then they have to go, uh, you know, That's once right. a year isn't, it. or mm -hmm, something, and, mm -hmm. and re-up a little bit or whatever I they do to take some. Remember the gold? There was some gold or something they had hidden during the World first world War Two. Right. And that was when they did not, they were not involved in that, in that war. Well, there's a little bit of controversy Contro about that, that right that. now. We better not yeah. talk about that. Yeah, I don't okay. think we, we're going to get we'll, into politics. Okay, but okay, then we'll just go on okay, to another Okay, we're just going to look at the lake a little bit. And again, uh, looking down to, uh, toward the south of that area, you see those beautiful Alps in the, in the background. I mean, they are exquisite. And a little bit later on, we're going to go up on, uh, on a mountaintop 7,000 feet high uh, after we uh, visit Lucerne a little bit. But I'm telling you, this is beautiful. Okay, Betty, it's on now to Lucerne. Oh, wow. 
And you know, Betty, I, the, the countryside here, you can, you can just photograph it and you can talk about it, but you really have to go and you really have to visit Switzerland. It is such a beautiful country. Yeah, but actually, you know, what we're looking at right now in the scene just before that, uh, well, we say that, I say that all the time. That could be so many places. True. You know, I, my idea of Switzerland when I first, when we first went or first heard about Switzerland, I was thinking, you know, and, and, the, and the mountains and yeah, Heidi and right. the goats and all of that. Well, there's, there's, there's enough area that is, that's like that. I mean, you, you can have a mental picture and then, of course, you can, once you go there, you see it. It's wonderful. Here is the hotel where we stayed at in Lucerne. Yes. And this was a typically European hotel where we stayed and it was, it was really lots of fun. Every room was a theme room. Remember what room did you stay I in? I had Marilyn Monroe in my room. You had uh, yes, I had Marilyn, oh, oh, oh. and I had it was you know, the, the hotels that we stay at are usually fairly American hotels. This was such a unique hotel, and we all we had such fun over this. The Bilstons had a room that you couldn't believe, and we all went up and took a look at it, and we laughed and laughed and laughed. He's tall, and it was kind of a slanted roof, but it was the you know it's something that you'll always remember. About about the trip. It happened on the 10th of August, 1792. 1792, during the French Revolution. The mercenaries were employed by Louis XVI. They were guarding the king in his palace, which of course, if you've been to Paris, you know today it's the Louvre. The king went away for the day and he left specific instructions to the Swiss guards <coughs> If anything transpired, they were not to shoot. So the Swiss naturally were obeying their employer, Louis the Sixteenth. And what happened were the French revolutionary forces attacked the palace, thinking that Louis was inside. Louis was not inside, but the Swiss mercenaries, of course, obeyed their orders from Louis and they did not shoot and as a result 800 Swiss mercenaries were massacred. And you know Betty that's something that uh, I mean that, that whole history of that where the those Swiss guards or the Swiss mercenaries were, were massacred like that but the people felt so strongly about it that they made this beautiful lion monument and and I think you said once before when we took a look at that that you could almost see the tears mm -hmm. rolling down the eyes of the uh, of the lion uh, but is this is beautiful and you know this is right in downtown Lucerne I mean it just uh, this is what may be surprising to many people but uh, here you are really right downtown you're just a half a block away from the post office actually we saw it when we were there before in and it never loses its impact when you go back and see it again. It isn't like you would say, oh, I've already seen this. Let's go see something else. You still want to stand and and, and it just enters into you. It's such a it, it is. It's, it's very dramatic. Yeah, it it's is. It's very dramatic mm -hmm. when you see that. It's, it's sad. Well, it's, it is. It makes you feel melancholy. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, the artist did, a, I think, a fabulous job on it. Well, if you were to head up either of these streets on the right or right in front of us, you'd be on the walking streets uh, there in uh, beautiful downtown Lucerne, and you could buy yourself an expensive wristwatch. Or you can go to the farmer's market here, and you could buy something else yeah. that wouldn't cost quite as much. I like that. I like, I'm, I like a lot of fruit, and it's fun when you can just buy fruit off the stands like that. Or flowers? No, I don't bring them up to the room. I what, mean, what the flowers? No fruit. Oh, the fruit. Fruit. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought that maybe you wanted to buy flowers. <laughs> no, too. I wouldn't bring. I'm never in my room, you know, ah. to enjoy the flowers. Well, we wanted to tell you a little bit about this bridge because fire did destroy two thirds of it, and the bridge was rebuilt. Uh, and in on April 14, 1994, it was opened again to the public. There were 111 painted gable panels that are up on the bridge. 65 of those were devastated by the flames and only 30 paintings uh, could be restored. But uh, I took a picture of one of these because not the whole bridge but uh, was destroyed and this is one of the original paintings, painting number 55 that we can see here on the bridge and 10 years ago when we were there before we had the opportunity to look at all of uh, those beautiful paintings. Of course that was before the bridge had burned That's down. Right. But thank goodness the whole thing didn't burn down. I mean, there's a little bit here you see on the left-hand side of the original part of the bridge. And, and uh, what did the bridge connect? Well, uh, 
two sides of the uh, of the river. Is I you know you, when you say that now that's a good question. I don't know if that's a river or if that's actually part of. Uh, it's not it's not a river. It's it's part of the. Well, it is. It's where the river <laughs> goes into Lake Lucerne. That's okay, the river that's goes it, in, yeah. but it is not a real heavy flowing river. And as we walked across, we walked from the downtown across the bridge to our mm -hmm. hotel. But you and we, you could look down and see the water, but you didn't get the impression that it was a that was a big, roaring a big, river. No. Uh -uh. Now the church that we are taking a look at right now is right on the uh, the edge of that, and this is a I believe this is the Jesuit church. Yep. And uh, it is magnificent inside, as you can see, and we saw this a lot in Bavaria as well, and we'll see more of it. it that beautiful, beautiful white or very pastel colored ceilings and then they're they're decorated so beautifully but you can see too this that happened to be the organ right there and you know what gets me betty a lot of people will go in uh, and they'll go in they'll take a, two or three pictures they'll turn around and, and, and walk out and say well we saw that but what would destroy me is if you didn't take a a good time to take a look at it you figure all the wonderful artists that worked on this and that did such tiny detail minute things not only the painting but also the carvings you know it kind of cheats them a little bit yeah. <laughs> it seems well, to me if people get an overall well we saw this now let's get going again you know but I, this is such a unique little church anyway so every part of it is beautiful and it's uh, you can just sit there if you, you know, we had time we just to sit right. and and that's when you appreciate and remember when we went before not this time they were playing the organ mm -hmm. and we had a concert yes. and it was oh, great beautiful. it was wonderful the other thing is you can do is you can sit in a sidewalk cafe and you can enjoy these paintings now these paintings are not in a church but they're on the side of a building and uh, here happens to be the Last Supper. And, and uh, this is a little tiny market square right here. In fact, there was a lot of folk art that uh, was in handicrafts that were here. And a lot of our people stop here to look at some things. And some people actually bought some things. That, the paintings made me think of Oberammergau when we were there painting. All the, all the facades were painted. Right. But you saw that here, of course, in Switzerland yes, as well. Uh -huh. And it looks like Ben is checking the prices out here to now see Judy's whether he's saying, let can Judy we, buy it. <laughs> yeah. Now Judy's probably asking Ben if uh, it's okay. And this is a, an old water fountain, as you can see here. And these bonsai tree. I wanted to buy one of these so badly. I thought, how in the world could I ever that's get right, that home? You, you couldn't. Get? And I wasn't going to carry it for you. Yeah, well, that's true. No way. <laughs> I, have to I don't think the agricultural people let me bring it. No, into the you would. That's anyway. right. They would take it away from yeah. you as we yeah, came through customs, right? Sort of. But again, there are more of the uh, of the buildings that are painted. And this one, you and I sat out there with some some of our friends, and uh, we were sitting right almost underneath this building here, enjoying a refreshment. And I a cold that, beer. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that this was incredible. I don't yeah. know exactly what it meant, but I thought it was incredible. It was uh, a beautiful painting, and we had we knew this little area before because we had gone to a, an, an afternoon uh, Swiss presentation there about ten years ago at a little restaurant that is right on your left hand side from where we are right now. You just see the roof of it down there in the bottom of the screen. In fact, Betty and I walked there uh, one evening when we had a little free time, and we happened to reacquaint ourselves with the lady who is the proprietor and also one of the stars of the show. Remember oh, that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And she, she knew how to yodel. Oh, did she ever. That oh. was fun. It, then, and the cheese fondue. And oh, the, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was, that was wonderful. Well, we're going to take a little ride now on the lake because we're going to go over to Mount Pilatos, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that. But on the way over there, when you get on this lake, and Lake Lucerne is a very large lake, and you're going to see all sorts of stuff. First of all, you're going to see some very expensive real estate. Is that true estate. there, or is that, a, is that no, my that, eyes doubled? <laughs> <laughs> he was coming down rather fast. Look at there. He landed right in the middle of all those people. I couldn't believe that. But uh, And there we can see the mount behind us there, or in front of us, I should say. Uh, but look at, you have a beautiful marina here with uh -huh. a lot of very expensive sailboats. They told us that they are not allowed to build now on Lake Lucerne any longer. However, I looked over in one place and I saw a little bit of construction going on. But you know, Betty, uh, somebody asked me about this. I said, you know, I wonder what one of those places it was, would cost. Well, these places are some of, this is some of the most expensive real estate in the world right here. It I is so it. desirable. I so you have probably a lot of international movie stars and other people that have the bucks to be able to uh, either rent these villas or have a home there, you know, year-round. Okay. 
and I can see why. But it, you know, so beautiful. there's something, uh, uh, so many people like to have uh, some place near the water, right, or on the water if preferably. Even here in Fresno, the the beautiful new homes now that are being built on the artificial lakes. Mm -hmm. and, it, and everybody, it's a prize to be able to get your house on the lake. Uh, we were able to visit some of our our guests or our passengers in their beautiful home on the lake, and I was just amazed that they had such a thing in Fresno. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, that's true. You yeah. think that so you're transported you really, somewhere that's else, right? That's right. That's right. So you really can stay home and have all the comforts of being someplace else, and. Let your mind take away whatever. I mean, let it run wild and well, say, for well, some today reason, we're in Switzerland. And for some reason, being on the water is very relaxing, except for this gal over here. She's going to go, uh, uh, what do you call it, water skiing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then she decided to do it topless, but I didn't put that in so that, I mean, we did happen <laughs> to see her out there on the water. Well, but I was looking at that just now, and I was wondering, does <laughs> she got a bathing suit on? Well, she did for a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, and as you can see, again. We don't have those kind of shows on Channel 49. No, no. Nobody has really requested those, so I <laughs> Uh, some of the artwork that you may see, though, I mean, from, you know, from some of these European but things, you might art. see a little bit of yeah, that. Yeah, that's art. Look at anyway. what we've got here. Uh, yeah, well, these, there's a school right there on the side of the lake that teaches you how to do this type of rock or mountain climbing. I guess they call it rock climbing or uh, scaling. Isn't that something? Yeah. You know, I think... And I shot this off the boat. I mean, they were they were that close to the water, so. And I well, thought, that's already climb close to the water. You fall in the water, it's not so bad, but you <laughs> fall in the rocks down below, boy, forget it. Well, this is one. Th that's one recreation You're that not I don't think do. I'm going to do. Uh, no. But no. we did rappelling though. Up. Remember when we we did we did that in in uh, Costa Rica. Right. We, that's Climbed true. up the tree and then scaled yeah, down we, the tree. Yeah, but we had a rope strapped to us, if oh, you well, recall, that, though, oh, too. Course, I mean, you know. Course. So this is the bottom of Mount Pilatus. Now, Mount Pilatus, as you can see here, climbs seven thousand feet. We're going to go up in these cogwheel cars that you see on the left hand side, and then we're going to come down on the other side in, uh, in a gondola. And Betty, I know you have done this before, but this was the first time that I was up there, and I was absolutely thrilled with this. I, every, I thought at first, well, everybody's talking, oh, let's go to Mount Pilatus. Mount, and some people who had been there 10 years ago said, we are going to go. That was a highlight of the trip, and I, I, I was a little skeptical about it. But once we got in this cogwheel car and started up on this, on this track, now, what I'm shooting here does not, yeah. really show the uh, steepness of, of the hill because this car is actually built on a, the car itself is built on an angle as you'll see in a little bit but you can see now we've just been going a couple of minutes and look how high we are now above the lake and we keep going and going and going and going in fact when we get up to the top I mean you saw people in the bathing suits down there on the lake but when you get up above there's snow up there uh, and you see uh, we had a beautiful day it was a great yeah, day. Yeah, though it's when I went up before, it was foggy, and you get up the top and you don't see anything, but it was still the fun of the ride. But uh, that's that's the chance you that, take. That is, that's exactly right. Now you can see how these cars are. This this one here, there's only one track going up, and so what happens is they're going to let us go by. So that th there's a side track over there, and the cars, uh, the, the I guess that's what you call them, slide over off of the track, let the other cars go up, and then they slide back on the track and go back the other direction. But doesn't one car pull the other one? D d not with this system? I no, thought, no, it's a cogwheel. Not cog with wheel. this. It's a cogwheel okay. thing, okay. yeah. And there's little waterfalls, as we just saw right here. It's, there's uh, your it's, snow. Yeah, there's a snow. And look, you do, I mean, 7,000 feet there, you get up above the, uh, the, the timber line. But th see these packages right here and these guys that were sitting right there? I thought that these are the guys that do that parasailing. Yeah. You know, have those parachutes packed in there. And so I thought, boy, I'm going to follow them, and I'm going to see where they're going to go off the cliff. But we got up there, and it started to rain, and I kind of lost them. I saw some other backpackers up there, but I thought, I don't know where they went to, because I wanted to get some shots of them going off the hill. Because look how high we are. Yeah. I mean, now you're up at the 7,000-foot level, and you're looking down toward Lake Lucerne there on, on our right. And there are several other lakes that you can see also from this uh, vantage point. But the, the weather just the weather changed well, it several does, times while we were so up there. High. Mm -hmm. But you know, people with respiratory problems uh, shouldn't be, shouldn't go up on there because of the um, the altitude gets so thin. Yeah, as, as the altitude gets so thin. The atmosphere. The air. The atmosphere. Yeah, okay. Right. But this is this is something. And again, some more shots there of the Alps in the uh, in the background. But uh, this was spectacular. 
I, you know, it really did blow my mind because I wasn't, I thought, uh, okay, I'll go up there. I'll, let's go take a look at it. You know, I could but say something did, real woo! mean. What? You said blow your mind, uh -huh. but I'm not going to say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is that because I gave you a compliment earlier? Yeah, yeah, of today? course, okay, of course. That's fine. Now, there's one of the cars going down. In fact, I think that was the one that we probably got off of. But, and you can see it is a steep climb. And the thing that amazed me more than anything were these guys and gals. Walk. They walked the entire distance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just going up 7,000 feet alone. Now you can take a look and see a little bit of how Lake Lucerne looks. I mean, that lake goes way back there. Betty, remember about 10 years ago, we stayed at a hotel way Beautiful. down that lake. We had to take a boat to get to this little village, and it was a beautiful hotel. I can't say enough about this part of Switzerland because I think it is just an absolutely great, great place to visit. You know what I remember most about that 10 years ago in this beautiful hotel, and we had Father Leonard Trindati with us, only he wasn't father then. He was uh, uh, contemplating being a priest, and uh -huh. he was with us, and he sent some of his clothes out to be laundered. Yeah. And he got the bill, and what was it, like 70 American dollars? Something like oh, that. It was, yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh, it was outrageous. And, and I think that was for, you know, about two or three pieces of underwear and some socks. That's something it. Like I that. mean, it was nothing, no, <laughs> nothing fancy. I mean, it was incredible, and he never got over it, and we never let him forget it either. Well, you have to figure out that, uh, you know, you have a, a very high standard of living in Switzerland. I mean, th their unemployment is practically non-existent at all. I think it's like 5%, something like that. Isn't that where people bring all their money to hide it? In the Swiss well, banks? Well, that, that's what people were doing, and I guess maybe they're still it, doing and that. And it worked out, Remember, didn't it? Well, yeah, it was that old thing, you know, you always got just a, a, you always got a numbered bank account, and you didn't have a, didn't have your name on it, so... Anyway, but anyway, this is part of Switzerland, and we're going to visit more, and of course, in our next uh, adventure here on the Channel 49 Adventures Travel Club television show. And uh, Betty has some wonderful trips coming up shortly, and she would like to tell you about those, but she's going to have you give her a call so she can send you information on that. Right, Betty? Oh, I'd be happy to. My number is 4887443. Right, and you can travel with us and see beautiful sights like this, like we're looking at the Alps here in Switzerland right now, and it is absolutely incredible. We uh, go from all extremes. We go high and we go low. <laughs> Whatever pleases you. That's right. So if you're interested in any of our trips, do give Betty a call at... 4887443. And we'll see you next time right here on the Adventures Travel Club television show. Until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.